We want to get right to our next guest. Dave Rubin's got a new book, Don't Burn This Book, Thinking for Yourself in an Age of Unreason. Dave, how are you, brother? I'm doing well. The day of press begins right here, so you're getting me at my <laughs> sharpest for whatever that's no. worth. <laughs> Whoever's getting you last, you'll be like, I don't even know what the book's called anymore. Just buy it. Um, hey, man, let me take a minute and just butter you up for a bit. So uh, I remember it. when I first saw I first saw you on YouTube. I don't know how many years ago, but I first saw it, and it was so different, and it was a it was a relief. It was a huge relief, and I remember thinking. I hope this works, right? I, I hope he's really successful with this. Uh, and I think you've built a model of thoughtfulness and long form that has opened the door for shows like this and, and many others. And I'm really grateful and I'm really happy for your success. Um, and I'll say one more thing. I remember we talked to Jordan Peterson a while back on my radio show and I said, Jordan, what's the number one characteristic that people need more of? And he said, that our society needs more of. And he said, courage. And I think what you did, and I want to ask you more on this, what you did to start your own show and do your own thing and what you're doing took a lot of courage. So on that point, when, what was the pivot point for you? What was your moment in your career when you said, what I'm doing is not really working. I need to start doing this new thing instead. Yeah, well, first off, thanks for the kind words. And as for Jordan and courage, you know, I don't know that that it's courage per se. Sometimes I think this is just sort of uh, maybe I just don't think about some of the consequences the way other people think about them, or I just kind of think you know you just you're just supposed to do what you're supposed to do as a human. We all know that there's something in us that we're supposed to be doing. Doesn't mean we do it all the time. In many cases, we di we never do it or we don't fully do it or anything like that. And when I started doing this show as an interview show and just totally being willing to talk to people on the left and talk to people on the right and treat them exactly the same way. I mean, I've done, I don't know, probably over a thousand interviews. I've never treated a guest differently uh, just because I disagree with them. I'm trying to hear their, their views. Now, sometimes they say things that, you know, personally, I'm like, well, that doesn't really make sense or you don't really know what you're talking about or something. But I don't view my hour with that person as the place to kind of destroy them on that. My, my, mm. My studio, this, you know, where I am right now, it's unfortunate we can't be doing these things in person, but when I'm sitting across from somebody, it's like, let's hear you out and let's see what happens. So as for the, the pivot point for me, I mean, there were a couple things. As you know, I was, I was a big lefty. I was a progressive. I was on the Young Turks Network. I, I was part of that machine. And, you know, for about a year there, it started wearing very thin on me that everybody that they were against was a racist and a bigot and a grifter and a sellout and a right-wing lunatic like all of the labels that you know we hear these all the time now and by the way i i am now accused of all of these things every day uh by the same people who used to love me um and it started wearing thin because it's like it, it can't be the equation didn't make sense it was like how is it possible that everyone who disagrees with us is the worst thing in the world. Like they're so obviously the worst creatures in existence and we are so morally right. You know what I mean? Like the equation itself just, just did not work anymore. It was starting to break down. And then in the book, I lay out three events that specifically caused the wake up. Um, so the three of them are, I'll, I'll just explain one further, but the, the three yeah. were, uh, well, Charlie Hebdo was the final straw when I saw people actually defending uh, killers of cartoonists. Uh, that was wow, like the final straw for me. Um, then another one uh, was when Ben Affleck and Sam Harris and Bill Maher got into a big fight about radical Islam and Sam and Ben, try, uh, Sam and Bill Maher tried to explain that you have to be able to talk about ideas, but you don't want to be bigoted towards people. And Affleck just sort of genuflected and he was very emotional and angry. And it was very yeah. much what I had always seen out of the left. It was like no argument to reason with just just overly emotional craziness. And, and then the middle one of those, which I've talked about the least, so I think it's the most interesting, is uh, I was on air with the Young Turks. It's about four years ago. And there was a clip of David Webb, and you may know David Webb from Sirius XM Patriot. He's a conservative who just happens to be black. And they're watching the clip, and they're all calling him an Uncle Tom and a sellout and self-hating black man. I mean, the worst things you could say, just because he's giving his you know conservative views on life. And what they didn't know was that years before I had a show on Sirius XM, and although I was a lefty and David was on the right, we met in the hall one day, we struck up a friendship, and I used to go on his show all the time to debate 
And then we'd go downstairs to Del Frisco's and get a steak and have some whiskey. And we were good and we became good friends and we still are to this day. And as I'm watching these supposed tolerant lefties, these tolerant liberals attack this man, say all the worst things about him just because he's a black man who doesn't think the way they want him to think. So they think it gives them the leash to call him an Uncle Tom and to sell out and imply that he's a grifter and that he doesn't believe what he says. And I know the man believes what he says. And at that moment, it just struck me because I knew him, because it was a friend. And I looked at them and I thought, this, this is the new racism. You know, when we think of racism, we think of racism like, oh, I don't want those people uh, using water fountains, which by the way, almost none of those types of racists exist anymore. But there is a new pernicious racism of the left, which is a subtle racism, which is we'll, we'll pretend we're for you, but if you as a member of that group dare defy us, dare think anything else, will destroy you. And that really was one of the one of the key pivotal moments for me. Slater Crusaders, thanks for watching the first on YouTube. If you want more, like, subscribe. We got plenty.